All right, there it is. We did it. It was uh, not incredible, but not terrible. It was. I think. I think it was fairly well designed for the age. So, all right, for the age. Got to remember that games used to be complete dog shit. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Like it took us. You know, from let's see, when did when did fucking Atari come out? Nineteen seventy seven. So I it had, took that us was to... my first video game console was an Atari twenty six hundred. Oh my god. Well, but I mean, I, I'm assuming you got it handed down. Oh yeah, yeah. Mine was an NES. But the point is, it took us. When do you think the game started getting consistently good? I'd say like, like the two thousands, like PlayStation era is the end of like PlayStation Nintendo sixty four. When we hit GameCube and PlayStation 2, that's when games started getting consistently higher quality across the board. Like, yeah, but how, yeah. Many, how many, like, dog shit movie tie-in games were there and share, uh, like, shovelware on the Wii and... that While that is true, <laughs> I feel like there's a certain janky, like, um, game design, like, understanding, like era where we did not know how to make games the right way that started fading away once we got to GameCube. Alright, so this game came out in 1996. Let's see what other video games released in 1996. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, good idea. Mario Kart 64. That's pretty good. It's got some jank, but it's pretty good. Uh, the original Tomb Raider. Blood Omen Legacy of Kane. It's pretty good. Uh, but Duke- if you go... Let's go ahead, go ahead. Duke Nukem 3D, Wild Arms, uh, Super Mario RPG, Crash Bandicoot, uh, Donkey Kong Country 3, the original Resident Evil, Pokemon Red, Blue, and Yellow, Super Mario 64. <laughs> so I, I would say we were making good games in 1996. <laughs> well, what I'm saying is, if you, have you gone back and played Mario Kart 64? No, not since I was a kid. It's fucking weird and doesn't really play very well. Okay, we were just talking in another video how fucking weird it was to play the first Resident Evil games. Yo. Tank you controls, etc. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, now Donkey Kong Country 2 did come out, but you see, it was it was a lot more miss than a lot, than hit. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, um, it was still easier to find, like, games that didn't work very well. Like, they could be fun, absolutely. Mario Kart 64 is fun. Super Mario 64 is fun. But there's a lot of weird, janky stuff in those games that you don't really see anymore. The first Crash Bandicoot, while it was good, had was just rife with bugs and all kinds of weird stuff. And uh, they, Luckily, they hit a winning formula pretty early on. Uh, but that was, I would say that's m- less jank than good. You can have both at the same time. Like, Mario Kart 64 was more fun than jank, but it's still super jank. And by jank, like, like when I say jank, like, Killing Floor 1 was very janky, but very fun. It, like, it was playable, but it had weird shit in it that, like, didn't really make sense. Like, I would say the tank controls from Resident Evil are an example of jankiness. Um, like, in the first Crash Bandicoot, if I remember correctly, as long as you were spinning when you jumped on the spikes in the wall levels... You could survive as long as you were not spitting around. Uh, so apparently there are four possible endings. Okay. Um, if Eddie makes it out and Roger doesn't, so if you warn Eddie about the fire but Roger is left on the floor, then Eddie ends up as a homeless drunk. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. If Roger makes it out and Eddie doesn't, Roger tries to flee the country but is caught charged with Eddie's murder and remanded to an asylum for the criminally insane. Oh, so that, okay, got it. If neither one of them makes it out, the ghost of Angelina narrates telling of the death of both men, the destruction of the bar for urban renewal, and that the ghosts of all three souls haunt the area where their dreams died. Okay. And then we apparently got the good ending where both of them escaped. With the stolen money. With stolen money, live in Mexico, being (laughs) drunk pieces of shit who didn't learn any lessons, except that they're (laughs) father and son. So now they can go be pieces of shit together and be happy about it. Right. Sorry, uh, I was still on this previous conversation. <laughs> oh, I might cut. I might cut that towards the beginning, and okay. then we'll put some other stuff here. So, like, um, Mega Man X3 also released in 1996, and I'd say that game has very little 
janky mechanics in it. Very well designed, because they've been doing Mega Man for a long time. Um, the reason why I think this janky nature continued into this era is because this is when 3D started, like, being a big thing. Right. Um, it looks like Kirby Superstar also re released that game super polished, because they've had a lot of time to do 2D games. Resident Evil came out on the 22nd of March. That game is kind of fucking weird. What's some more? What's some more 3D games? That, well, Super that Mario were, 64. Hmm. They that game is pretty good, although the camera's a little weird because they only had the one stick. You know, Elder Scrolls 2 Daggerfall came out. Oh Which boy, is that's a isn't that that's like a game. first person like dungeon crawler kind of thing? So it's uh, a 3D environment, but not really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that one doesn't really count. That's, uh, it yeah, count. It, yeah. It's like Doom. Yeah. Twisted Metal 2. Those games were kind of funky, but still good. I, I haven't played the first Tomb Raider. Do you have any experience with that? No. I only played, like, the newer ones in, like, the Xbox 360. But they did just announce that Tomb Raider 1 through 3 are getting remastered. What the fuck is Furcadia? No idea. It is a furry MMO social game. Cool. Oh, uh, well. Awesome. <laughs> Apparently, it's popular. It was the first social MMO RPG, so it's like the first VR chat. Huh, that's kind of neat. Longest running online. There's also Terra Enigma. Why do I remember this? Yeah, that was Terra. I don't think Terra Enigma ever released in the U.S., but that was part of a trilogy of uh, Super Nintendo RPGs. Yeah. Uh, what was the there was a name, the... Illusion of Gaia and Soul Blazer. Yeah, developed by Quintet I've, for the Super Nintendo. I've played Soul Blazer. Okay, I've had... I own a copy of uh, Illusion of Gaia. Hmm. The Quintet trilogy is what those are referred to. Okay. Um, but yeah, Terra Enigma, as far as I remember, never released... No, it came out in Japan in 95 and then in Europe in 96, but it was never officially released in the U.S. So you know what I would equate this era of gaming to? What's that? This is, this is college age. Video games are college age, right? Uh -huh. they're, pretty, they're pretty well like off and they're pretty grown, but they still have immature tendencies that they need to work out before they can be a full adult. Mm-hmm. Would you agree that's a fair assessment of yeah. gaming? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, our, what's the current era of gaming, then? So, the current era of gaming is we're in the boomer era, era where we've had it right. so good for so long that when things don't go our way, we get angry about it. So, when IGN gives Starfield a 7, we get super emotional and upset because uh, how, how dared this game that I'm excited about not be a 10 out of 10, even though I've never but, played it. <laughs> but I can also say, at the same time, uh, if this is the boomer era, that means that we're also falling for for scams that younger kids clearly do, would not have fallen for, right? Like getting uh, you know called by somebody saying they're talking about our car's extended warranty, right? People mm -hmm. should have fucking known. You should have known that that was going to be a piece of shit. Well, actually, what do you think of Starfield? I haven't played it yet. You should have known it. it's a it's a Bethesda game, and you ne I never buy into Bethesda hype because they're always broken until the community fixes it themselves. Mm -hmm. Um. So what I've seen, the part that bothers me is that like, oh, fully explorable, like you know, just go wherever you want, generated planets. What they do is they put you in a fishbowl. They put you in a fish tank, and there's a bunch of little things in the fish tank, and you can't go outside of your fish tank. You know, you, you literally hit invisible walls. Right, you yeah. can't go through. Yep. Right? But we're at the era right now where, like, microtransactions are everywhere, scammers are everywhere, and you... I don't know. I just don't trust third-party games anymore. Right. I don't trust... I don't trust... Well, I mean, it's also, you're talking about boomers falling for stuff. It's like, I mean, loot boxes uh, and all of that stuff. And then it's like, uh, people are aghast that Blizzard fucking riddled Diablo 4 with microtransactions and the seasonal pass is garbage. And like, oh my God, how could we have seen this happening? 
my brother in Christ, you bought the loot boxes. Right. You bought the fucking uh, horse armor in Oblivion. That's that's what happened. <laughs> they w- they did it one time, and everybody's like, wait, you, they'll pay $3 for a skin? Yep. Let's, and, let's, let's do it! And here, and here we are. So then, what? The so end? it all comes back to Todd Howard. <laughs> <laughs> well, it just it just comes back to capitalism. Yep. Damn it. So, all right. Then what's the Blizzard? Equi- then what's the what's what's the Boomer equivalent of if we're talking if we're equating us to the Boomer period of like indie games and and these small companies making awesome games? Then what is that? Is that mom and pop shops that are still trucking on after all these years? Um, well, I mean, there there are cool boom, boomers who uh, learn and grow and expand with modern culture and aren't stuck in their past and, oh, things now aren't the way they were when I was a kid, so everything sucks, and it's the children's mm-hmm. fault. The plague of early alpha release indie games. Early, uh, um, early, early access. access, yeah. So what that means is, is that we are gonna pre. It's basically imagine if you could pre-order a game and play it when it was still broken. <laughs> right. Like if if we could play Starfield like a year before it came out and it was even worse than it is now, that's what early access indie games are. Right. Uh, yeah, uh, and go check out our Core Keeper Early Access episodes. <laughs> then at the same time, oh yeah. <laughs> but like, that game feels good, though. Yeah. I mean, we still haven't reached the end. And if you think about it, Terraria, we did the same thing. We, like, we got all the way down, we killed the Wall of Flesh, and then later, it turns out killing the Wall of Flesh unlocked more game. And we yeah. did that, and they added more game on top of that. So... Early access doesn't necessarily equate to something that is bad. What happens is, is if they pull a fucking Nether, if I don't know if you remember Nether, yep, that game was an early access. They got a bunch of money and then they fucking left. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's also kind of like Star Citizen. Is <laughs> like that game's never going to come out. Like 1.0 of that game's never going to come out, even though they have made tens of millions of dollars off of you know, early access. If you have loot boxes in your game before you reach 1.0, fuck you. (laughs) If you can purchase in-shop coins before you can get to the end of the game for real, then you you can go eat a fucking dick. Right. Uh, I mean, if you do that in general, even after the game's out, then fuck you too. (laughs) When are those kinds of things acceptable? I don't care. I like. I don't care if a game does, um, like the like skins. Yeah. Like that's that's fine. I'm not gonna buy them, but some people will and like that, and that's fine. But when you're putting pay to win mechanics in your game that are hidden hidden behind loot boxes, or you're stopping progression behind a paywall, I mean that's just. That's so like unethical and shit. Yeah, there was um, Pikmin Bloom. I'm playing right now. Here, okay, well that's different. All right, here's, here, here's the difference though. If a game is free to play, and they put skins or coins or something in it for me to boost a little, you know, like Pikmin Bloom, whatever. It's like a walking app. I spent one dollar to buy a ticket to do a thing that I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. And it's a free game. I feel like giving them a dollar for something I'm enjoying. I can do that. Or League of Legends. They had skins you could buy. I think that's okay. Overwatch 2 would have been fine if it came out first and they didn't already have a system for you to get things in it. Now it's just nothing but loot boxes and that's horseshit. Right. Um, but the, did... I think Riot also, Riot also had a currency where you could buy skins if you, if you earned enough points though, right? Yeah. So, if the game costs me nothing, and, and I can donate to, to make the game, like, continue, that's fine. But at the same time, right now, Pikmin Bloom is doing this shitty thing, because there's an event going on where I can get ice cream, dick, or Pikmin. And they're super cute, and I want them, 
but it's got me locked behind. I have to plant a bunch of one specific color of one specific flower, and I have to get the very specific nectar to get the petals to plant the flowers. And of course, there's a button to press. You can just buy. You can just buy it. Just buy it from us, and you'll get the shortcut. Man, fuck you. Why would you do that to me? Because they gotta make their goddamn money. Yeah, but see, I, I don't necessarily have a problem with that if there's a way to do it for free. Yes, it, it may is take... RNG otherwise. It's RNG otherwise. Yeah. Yeah, that kind of sucks. But it's I for a to... cosmetic thing. It's not, like, yeah. preventing you from playing the game anymore. Yeah, but I want it. I want the ice cream, man. Well, that's how they get you. <laughs> Damn it. Damn it. I think the way that Vampire Survivors on the mobile app did it was really nice. All right? You can play that game and never see a single ad. You can see an ad to revive yourself if you die one time. You can also see an ad to give yourself a percentage bonus increase to the money at the end of a run. Both of which you can, can ignore and never see. Right. That's a free game, and they make some money off of ads to give yourself tangible bonuses to win and do better. Which is not going to affect anybody but you. Right. What a, what a good design. Thank you, Ponkle. <laughs> Just... Capitalism is weird and making things strange for everybody and whatever. Whatever. Just play some games until you die. Right. Amen. 